What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Martian MMA Podcast. I am your host, and my name is John, and this week we are back with episode 121, where we will be analyzing and predicting the UFC fight night going down this Saturday, October 31st, 2020, headlined by Uriah Hall versus Anderson Silva. This 12 fight card will take place at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada, which means it will take place in the small UFC cage. Just a quick recap of last week in terms of official bets. It was a losing week. We did lose 3.9 units in terms of official track bets. Look to get back on track this week with a win. You will be able to see all my official bets on my Bet MMA Tips page, which is available in the description of the YouTube video and on my Twitter profile. I am still up around 39 units for the entire year and look to get back on track from that small loss last weekend here. I already have a few bets locked in on my Bet MMA page, and I will be tipping a few more bets I like and have made throughout the rest of this podcast, so keep your ears open. And we are going to start things off with the first fight of the night in the bantamweight division. We have Kevin Navidad taking on Miles Johns. The opening betting line for this one was Johns minus 205 to Navidad plus 175. Right now looking over on Bet Online, we are seeing Johns minus 155 to Navidad plus 135. Line margins tightening up, more action coming in on the underdog, Kevin Navidad, and I agree with that action. Navidad is coming in here making his UFC debut. He was slated to fight Brian Kelleher a few months back on a short notice fight, but that never came to fruition, and he's getting his debut here against Johns. Navidad is pretty well-rounded. He seems to be a grappler primarily. He has decent takedowns, not the best top game. A lot of his fights end up in a cage-pushing, clinching type of situation. And Navidad's striking is making solid improvements. I think that it looked a little more raw earlier on in his career. But his most recent fight, he was actually successfully pressuring his opponent, throwing combinations of punches, and was able to knock him out with one punch in the second round of that fight. So his Striking is definitely improving, and I think Navidad's a pretty well-rounded fighter. I actually think this is kind of a mirror match. These guys have very similar styles. They both like to shoot takedowns, and they end up in a lot of clinching and grinding situations against the cage. I think Johns is a little more proven. I think he's fought the better fighters, and I think we have a better sense of Johns' defensive grappling. We know that it's not very good. We saw him struggle with the grappling of Cole Smith in their fight. Probably should have lost that fight, honestly. Got his back taken a lot was taken down, grinded against the cage. So both of them could be susceptible to getting pushed against the cage and taken down here because they both are definitely better offensive grapplers than defensive. In the striking here, I'm going to give Kevin Navidad a slight advantage. I think he's got the cleaner, more effective technique on the feet, although we haven't really seen it against good competition, so it is a bit of an unknown. But on the feet from Johns, I just see a lot of raw ability from him. He kind of marches forward very heavy on that lead leg, susceptible to getting leg kicked. He doesn't have great boxing defense, and his offensive striking is just very basic. Uh, He throws jabs, the occasional overhand right, leg kicks, but he doesn't really set up his offense well, and that's why I'm giving Navidad a slight advantage. But in terms of how I see the fight actually playing out, I kind of envision a stalling, grinding type of fight against the cage where there's a lot of battles for underhooks and a lot of clinching going on against the fence. I think Navidad will have a slight advantage in terms of striking, and that will lead John to start shooting takedowns and getting that grinding type of fight going. Navidad's Defensive grappling is way more unproven than John's is. We know that John's is not great, but we just have not seen that much footage of Navidad defending takedown. So it's really hard to know how those exchanges will go. But in those grinding exchanges, I do slightly favor John's. And I think that maybe his experience here will factor into him winning a close decision. So in terms of an official pick goes, I'm going to go with Miles John's by decision. But I did actually bet Kevin Navidad earlier in the week at plus 160. Haven't tracked that bet because I'm not really in love with it. I think it's more of a a slight value play. I actually think that the the Kevin Navidad by points prop has some value on it as well. I think that was at 4-1 to earlier in the week. So I like Navidad's chances here, but he's just a little too unproven for me to go out and flat pick him. So in terms of a straight pick, I'm going to go with Miles Johns. But it's going to be a close grinding 29-28 29-28 type of fight against the cage. So the pick is going to be Miles Johns by decision, but it's not a confident pick. It's probably dog or pass at these odds, but I think that where the line is at now is actually very accurate. The next fight takes place in the women's flyweight division. We have Courtney Casey taking on Priscilla Cachoeira. The opening betting line for this one was Casey minus 250 to Cachoeira plus 210. Right now, over on Bet Online, we are seeing Casey minus 260 to Cachoeira plus 220. 
So this is peak MMA right here. It doesn't get any better than this. Casey versus Cachoeira should be a hilarious fight between these two. Right off the bat, I do think that Casey is the better overall fighter. I think she has the better striking and grappling skill. And she has the more experience, the wins over better competition. But with all that being said, I still think that Cachoeira has a very realistic chance to win this fight. And I think that if Courtney Casey doesn't get takedowns, it's going to be a very competitive striking fight on the feet. Cachoeira's defense is horrible. She gets lit up by strikes. But one thing I will give her credit for is she's extremely tough. She does not stop coming forward. She can be getting lit up with strikes to the head and just keep marching forward. And she actually had some success in round three versus Molly McCann. Round one and two, she got uh, taken down and beat up by McCann. But in round three, she she was coming on strong. She was busting McCann up. And there's really no quitting Cachoeira. So I will give her credit. She's kind of a hilarious fighter. Not very skilled to watch, but she's very tough and she will fight for your money, in my opinion. I'm not advising you to go out and bet on Cachoeira right away because I do think this fight heavily relies on Casey's willingness to wrestle. If she attempts takedowns, I think she will get them because Cachoeira's ground defense, takedown defense, or get-ups is all really bad. So that would be a pretty easy path to victory for Casey, but she's just not a reliable wrestler. She does like grappling a lot in her fights, but she's usually the one getting taken down and attacking off of her back with submissions and sweeps. She's actually only hit three takedowns in the past five years over the past 12 to 15 fights. So she's definitely not a reliable wrestler, and you can't count on her hitting takedowns because she just hasn't proven to do so in the past. So I think there's a good chance that Casey does mix it up and get a takedown here at some point, but you just can't be relying on that. So I would not be laying the minus 260 on Casey, that's for sure. And it's honestly hard to lay the plus 220 on Cachoeira just because her striking defense is so bad. She absorbs close to eight strikes per minute and only lands four. So she is getting hit four more times than she's landing every single minute that she fights in the UFC. So that's just a terrible statistic to look at. And I think that could come into play here because Casey can put up volume. She can throw a lot of distance strikes like she did versus Angela Hill just a few years back. So I do think that Casey could win the striking here too. I'm not saying that if it's striking, the Cachoeira will guaranteed win, but I do think an attrition-based win uh, on toughness, durability, and volume is there for Cachoeira late. So... No bets on this fight for me. It's just way too low level and so much could happen in this fight. Maybe look to live bet it for this one just for some some humor in it. But I'm actually going to be cheering for Cachoeira here. I think that her pulling off the victory would be hilarious. I don't think she does so. I think the official prediction I'm going to go with is Courtney Casey by round three or decision. I think decision is the most likely, but I could see a finish late in round three as well. So the pick is Casey by decision. The next fight takes place in the light heavyweight division. We have Dustin Jacoby taking on Justin Ledet. The opening betting line for this one was Jacoby minus 170 to Ledet plus 145. Right now over on Bet Online, we are seeing Jacoby minus 340 to Ledet plus 280. Much more action coming in on the favorite, Dustin Jacoby, in this one. I was actually a part of that action. I jumped in on him at minus 185 on Bet Online a few weeks ago. Did not track the bet because he got immediately bet down pretty hard, so I didn't want to track that one. But I do feel pretty confident that Jacoby wins this one. It's a pretty simple fight to analyze, in my opinion. I think that Jacoby is just a much better striker. He looked great on the Contender Series in his last fight. He completely smashed his opponent, stuffed some takedowns, was probably on his way to finishing his opponent in round two, but Flores just showed insane toughness. And Jacoby actually kind of gassed out in round three because he tried finishing him so hard in rounds one and two and didn't get that finish. He definitely slowed down a little in round three, but he still fought well while he was tired. He didn't have a bad round in round three by any means, and he, he won that fight by such a huge margin anyway. Jacoby does come from a kickboxing background, so his takedown defense is probably his weakest aspect of his game, but versus Ty Flores, he looked respectable. He stuffed a lot of takedowns. I do think his takedown defense is pretty unproven, and it will definitely get tested later in his UFC career. But I highly doubt that Justin Ledet is the guy who's going to test that wrestling. He's primarily a striker himself, mostly a boxing attack with an occasional leg kick thrown in. But I just see it being very hard for Ledet to win this fight when, in my opinion, Jacoby is the more accurate, powerful, and faster striker. He's got the more diverse attack. I think he mixes in his knees, elbows, kicks a little better than Ledet does. So I just give Jacoby a pretty significant striking advantage here. And Ledet doesn't really have the wrestling to get Jacoby down. So outside of a crazy flash KO from the dead, I see it very I see it being very difficult for him to win this fight. And the pick is going to be 
Jacoby by either late KO or decision. I think I'm going to go with decision. We saw recently in Jacoby's fight against East and against Flores, he was absolutely smashing those guys, but just didn't quite have the power to finish them off and get a TKO and did make it to the decision. So I think that's what happens here. Ledet's probably going to stay tough and just get his ass kicked for 15 minutes. Uh, but the KO is certainly possible with how hard and clean that Jacoby lands. So be careful betting that decision prop. The next fight takes place in the welterweight division. We have Jason Witt taking on Cole Williams. The opening betting line for this one was Williams minus 145 to Witt plus 125. Right now over on Bet Online, we are seeing Witt minus 150 to Williams plus 130. The line has flipped. Witt is now the favorite, and I agree with that action. I was actually a part of that action. I bet Witt at minus 120 and at minus 135. I have two units tracked on him at minus 135 for my Bet MMA page. And I think that this fight is actually more of like a 60 to 65% chance for Witt, possibly even higher than that, because I just see Witt as the much more well rounded fighter. This has been a pretty popular pick from the week. A lot of betters I see are coming in on Witt. So I'm actually surprised to see that Witt is still holding at around minus 150. There's very little footage of Williams available online, only three fights in total, and two of them are outside of the UFC against pretty low-level competition. He took down John Kennedy and got a quick TKO over him, but in the Charlie Brown fight, he attempted taking Brown down in that fight. He failed and was getting outstruck for the first seven minutes of that fight until Brown started to gas out. Williams came on strong in the second half of the fight and was able to win. And then, of course, Williams, his one and only UFC fight was about 16 months ago versus Claudio Silva. He was taken down and submitted in round one of that fight. Did not have a good showing, in my opinion. It seems like Williams is just a very low-level fighter, pretty reliant on getting an early round one finish. And if he doesn't get that, he just does not have much skill to his game. So unless he gets a round one finish here over Witt, I do not see him winning the fight. I think Witt is better everywhere, the better striker, the better wrestler, can hit takedowns and keep top position. And Williams has looked susceptible to getting taken down in his fights. So I really see Witt being able to win this fight any way he wants. I could see a late finish along the lines from Witt if he decides to turn up the pressure. Williams does not look extremely durable or tough and could just be fighting for a paycheck and want to get out of there in rounds two or three so i could see a late finish from wit somewhere along the line i've seen some people on wit round three but in terms of an official prediction i'll go with wit by decision just to be safe and i do have two units on wit at minus 135 even at minus 150 i think there's some value left on wit and the only way that williams wins here is just by an early round one finish the next fight takes place in the middleweight division. We have Sean Strickland taking on Jack Marshman. The opening betting line for this one was Strickland minus 260 to Marshman plus 220. Right now we are seeing over on Bet Online Strickland minus 350 to Marshman plus 285. Much more action coming in on the favorite Sean Strickland here. Strickland is actually moving up in weight. He's fought at welterweight throughout most of his career. And he's actually coming off of about a two-year layoff. He was involved in like a motorcycle accident. I think he hurt his knee pretty badly. So Strickland's been taking some time off, coming off of some surgery. So that is relevant here. You never know how well Strickland's going to recover. But I think that he would not be coming back if he didn't feel like he was the same fighter he was. So I'm still pretty confident in Strickland. He was a very good fighter before. Before that injury happened. Strickland can be a little low output at times, maybe not the most aggressive or exciting fighter, but he's very accurate with his punches. He's got sharp striking. He's very hard to take and hold down. So he's a pretty well-rounded fighter in my opinion, just not the most aggressive or powerful guy. So he kind of gets forgotten about. Uh, but if you look at his recent fighting as Nordian Taleb, he was busting Taleb up with strikes in that fight, was able to hurt him in round two with a punch and swarm him with punches to get a TKO. So Strickland does have some finishing ability uh, in his arsenal. Now getting over to Marshman, just a very low level fighter in my opinion, been always reliant on his striking, always had bad takedown defense, grappling, just very poor grappler, reliant on his boxing and his knockout power, but he isn't even that good of a striker to be honest. His last win was a split decision win over John Phillips that a lot of people gave that fight to Phillips. So we could actually see Marshman being 0-4 in his past four fights, although he has fought pretty good competition. I just don't see much skill from Jack Marshman. He doesn't seem like he's improving his game much. His takedown defense has always been a huge liability, and he's just not that good of a striker on the feet. So I see it being very difficult for him to win this fight. The one thing he does have going for him is he is a natural middleweight here. Strickland's moving up in weight class. So maybe if Marshman can get Strickland involved in a brawl early, catch him with a punch, try to have a power advantage, that is Marshman's only chance to win the fight is by an early knockout. So 
If it weren't for the long layoff and the question of lingering injuries for Strickland, I think that he could deserve 86, 90 percent here, a massive minus 600, 900 favor. But I understand why the line is holding under four to one at this point because of those questions. But I still think that Strickland will make the transition well up to 185. I don't think we will see any long lasting problems from him. And I think that he outstrikes Marksman pretty easily here. Strickland does have the ability to hit offensive takedowns. That would be a pretty easy path to victory as well, just because Marshman is such a bad grappler. But I don't think that takedowns will be a priority from Strickland here. I think that he will be content to just box Marshman up on the feet for 15 minutes. So the pick is going to be Strickland by decision. I think he wins this fight pretty dominantly. The next fight takes place in the bantamweight division. We have Adrian Yanez taking on Victor Rodriguez. The opening betting line for this one was Yanez minus 305 to Rodriguez plus 225. Right now we are seeing Yanez minus 450 to Rodriguez plus 350. So both guys making their UFC debut here. Yanez coming off of a quick knockout on the Contender Series. Yanez is the much better, more proven fighter. He's fought in better organizations. Rodriguez, very low level fighter. Very little tape available of him online. Only three fights are available and most of them are against very low level opponents. I think the fight that we learned the most about him is the Masaryk fight. We saw that his takedown defense is not very good in that fight. His boxing defense is not very good. He trains out of a bang Muay Thai gym, and he tries to do a lot of fancy combos, head kicks, a lot of TJ Dillashaw type of stuff, but he just does not have the skill to do so. And I just have not seen anything from Rodriguez to think that he can compete with Yanez here. I've actually seen pretty bad boxing defense from Rodriguez, so I think that Yanez likely knocks him out pretty early here. Yanez is a pretty interesting prospect. He's definitely got good striking, very powerful and quick hands, but not the best output. Doesn't really have consistent output, and when he's kind of relying on those knockouts, he does not have the best round winning style, doesn't have the most consistent output in his striking. So that could be a problem of his in the future, but I just do not think that Victor Rodriguez is the guy to test him at all here. So I think this will be a pretty easy showcase fight for Yanez. Yanez's money line at minus 450 is definitely a pass. I think if you want to bet Yanez in this one, I would just take the knockout minus 135, minus 140 is what I bet it at. I think it's just inevitable that Rodriguez gets caught at some point and would be pretty surprised to see Yanez win by submission or decision. So I think he gets an early knockout here and the pick is Yanez KO1. The next fight takes place in the lightweight division. We have Alexander Hernandez taking on Chris Gritzmacher. The opening betting line for this one was Hernandez minus 352, Gritzmacher plus 285. Right now over on Bet Online, we are seeing Hernandez minus 425 to Gritzmacher plus 325. I'm going to call him Grits just to simplify this a little bit, but this is actually a pretty fun fight. Gritzmacher is coming off of a long layoff. His last fight was two and a half years ago against Joe Lozon. It was a dominant victory for Gritzmacher there. The first two minutes were a bit of a competitive fight, but Gritzmacher started to take over, started to land heavy shots on Lozon, and just poured it on in round two for a TKO in the corner of that fight. Gritz is not the most athletic guy, but I think he does have pretty good skill. I think he's got the right idea on how to win fights a lot of the time. He has a good idea on his strategy and his path to victory. I actually liked the strategy he showed in the Davi Hamos fight. He showed a pretty good sprawl and brawl type of game plan. He was pressuring Hamos, getting him moving backwards, making it harder for him to shoot takedowns. And Gritzmacher showed a pretty decent sprawl in that fight. He did get taken down and spent some time on his back, but he performed pretty well against Hamos, although he did eventually get submitted in round three of that fight. Now getting over to Hernandez, a very confusing fighter in my opinion. He comes into the UFC, gets a quick knockout over Benil Dariush, and I think that that kind of diluted his opinion of himself a little bit. I think he started to think he was a better striker than he was, when I think that Hernandez is really best at grappling. But even in terms of his grappling, I don't think he really sets up his takedowns well. He doesn't really have that reliable of a top game, doesn't really have the ability to control his opponents and land ground and pounder submission. So he's kind of just a very athletic fighter who has decent skills everywhere just doesn't really seem to specialize in one any particular area of MMA with that being said I think it's going to be pretty hard for Hernandez to justify that minus 425 price tag in this fight I just don't see him winning the fight convincingly enough to justify being 82 83 percent like the odds indicate here 
In the striking, I actually think I favor Chris Gritzmacher. I think he is the more effective, accurate, and just craftier guy on the feet. I think that Hernandez has really struggled in the striking in his past few fights. He was countered hard coming in versus Cowboy Cerrone. He was very tentative and low output versus Francisco Trinaldo. And then he was getting countered hard by Drew Dober. It got outstruck and knocked out in his most recent fight. So I think Hernandez's confidence is pretty low right now. I don't think that he hasn't really had a good performance since the OAM win. That was a very close back and forth grappling fight, but I think Hernandez did show some pretty good attrition there, some good grit and toughness by uh, gutting that fight out late. He won that fight in the third round with his cardio and his athleticism. I actually think this fight is a pretty similar story. I think it's going to be a very close competitive fight that I think ultimately Hernandez does edge and win the fight via decision. And a lot of it's going to have to come into the fact that he is the better athlete. He likely has the better cardio, the more speed and power on the feet. But I do think that Chris Gritzmacher is the more skilled MMA fighter. He is coming off that long layoff. We, we might see big improvements from Gritzmacher, but you can never rely on him to make big improvements in your capping. But in the pure pre-fight money line for this one, I think it's dog or pass all day. I think there's some pretty significant value on Chris Gritzmacher. Although I have not locked in a bet yet, just because I envision this fight being a close decision no matter what, we might see Chris Gritzmacher edged that decision and win, but it, he has a very small window to win here. I don't think he really has the, the finishing ability, the power to finish Hernandez in the feet. So you're basically paying plus 335 for a guy to edge a decision against a more athletic fighter, and that's just hard to do. So I might lock in a bet on Gritzmacher at some point in time, but as of now, there are no bets in this fight. I actually like the goes the distance on this fight. I think it's very likely to go the distance closer to 65 to 70%. So I probably will track a play on goes the distance in this fight. The next fight takes place in the lightweight division. We have Bobby Green taking on Tiago Moises. The opening betting line for this one was Green minus 170 to Moises plus 145. Right now we are seeing over on Bet Online Green minus 285 to Moises plus 245. More action coming in on the favorite Bobby Green. A lot of action, and I agree with that action. I think that it seems like the market is finally starting to realize what a great fighter Bobby Green is. It might sound crazy to you, but I think that Bobby Green is one of the most skilled fighters in the entire UFC. I really don't think there's a single aspect of MMA that Bobby Green does poorly. He is kind of known for not having the best initiative at times and kind of lulling himself into closer fights and making the fight closer than it has to be. But Skill-wise, Bobby Green is tremendous. I really enjoy watching him fight. This is actually a fun fight against another good skilled fighter in Thiago Moises. But in my opinion, Green is the much better striker than Moises. So Moises is going to need to hit takedowns here to win the fight. And Bobby Green just has tremendous takedown defense. He can scramble on the bottom. He can get off of his back if he gets taken down. So I just see it being very hard for Moises to win this fight outside of a submission and a transition somehow. Which is basically how Moises won his last fight. He shot a takedown on Michael Johnson, was able to pull guard and transition to a straight ankle lock and get the submission. But Michael Johnson is a pretty notoriously poor grappler and Bobby Green is a much better defensive grappler. So I cannot see him getting caught in anything like that. Outside of a crazy front choke or aggressive submission that Moises dives on, I don't see him winning the fight. So I think Bobby Green outstrikes him on the feet, stuffs any takedowns, gets up off of his back if he does get briefly taken down and wins the fight pretty comfortably by decision. Bobby Green is not a great finisher, and even when he has his opponents clearly beaten like his last fight against Patrick, he is still not really likely to finish them. So Bobby Green by decision is a pretty good play here. I played that at minus 135. I think Moises is good enough and tough enough to make it to a decision, and Bobby Green should win that decision pretty clearly. So Green decision is the pick here. I think the decision is probably the better bet than Moneyline as well at this price. The next fight takes place in the heavyweight division. We have Maurice Green taking on Greg Hardy. The opening betting line for this one was Hardy minus 205 to Green plus 175. Right now we are seeing Hardy minus 340 to Maurice Green plus 265. More action coming in on the favorite Greg Hardy in this one. And I disagree with the action. I think that where it's at now, the line is probably wide. And there is some value on Maurice Green. But I think the play that I like in this fight better than Green money line is the goes to distance prop. I've already tracked this bet on my bet MMA tips page. 1.5 units at plus 250 odds over on the FanDuel Sportsbook. 
So FanDuel had fight doesn't go the distance at minus 350, which I tweeted out about this earlier. That's a 77.8% chance that this fight ends by finish, and I just don't see the fight ending by finish anywhere near that rate. I think that Hardy has a better chance to win by finish than Green does. He's about two to three times more likely to finish, but even Hardy's knockout chances at best, I think, are about 25%. In Hardy's first few MMA fights when he was fighting low-level competition, he was getting knockouts, he was fighting pretty aggressively. But as Hardy's gotten more experience in his MMA career, I think he's kind of transitioning to more of a point fighting style and more comfortable with winning the fight via decision. His past few wins have gone to decision. Fortunate for us, the betters, I don't think the market has quite realized this yet and they're kind of just assuming that Hardy is still some vicious power puncher knockout artist and I do not think he is that. Some people could be saying that Morgan Screen doesn't have great boxing defense, doesn't have the best chin, doesn't really react well to getting hit, and he has been knocked out before in the UFC by Sergey Polovic, but I think Polovic is way better than Hardy, he's much more experienced. I do think that Hardy actually did learn from the Alan Crowder fight, learned from his mistakes. He's not going for those early round one knockouts, not risking gassing out and being tired later in the fight. He's fighting smarter, he's fighting a little more calculated, and it seems like he's sticking to his jab. He throws a lot of hard leg kicks. I would say that both of these guys are pretty susceptible to getting leg kicked, especially Green. Uh, in Green's most recent fight against John Vellante, he got his leg lit up by leg kicks. So I do think that Hardy has good success with his leg kicks here. He probably hits the occasional jab on Maurice Green. Green is actually a pretty solid distance striker. He doesn't have good defense, as I mentioned earlier, but his offense is pretty good. He's got good kicks. He throws a lot of straight punches. He has pretty high output, and he's a tall, long, difficult guy to deal with. So I think this fight will end up more of a striking fight where they're kind of staring at each other for a lot. They're throwing a lot of leg kicks, not the most punches, and I actually see it being a low output 15-minute decision that Greg Hardy likely wins by landing the harder, more damaging strikes. I think the leg kicks are going to be a big factor in this fight. Maybe I'm completely wrong about Hardy transitioning to more of a decision type of fighter. Maybe he comes out aggressive searching for that round one knockout and gets that knockout and proves me completely wrong. But I think more often than not, this fight actually does go the distance. I think that we could see goes the distance being favored here. And the market is just not really waking up to the fact that Greg Hardy is not a knockout artist and he seems to be comfortable fighting to a decision and winning a low output decision as he did versus Ben Sassoli and as he did versus Jorgen DeCastro. So my bets on this fight will be 1.5 units. The fight goes the distance. And I think if you want to take a stab on Hardy decision or even green decision, I think that those plays are worth it as well. I think there's a value on all three of those props I just mentioned. In terms of money line, it is likely dog or pass. I don't think there's value on Hardy money line. If you have to pick a money line, I would go with green at these odds. I think there is some slight value there. But I really like the goes the distance in this fight. The pick is going to be Hardy by decision. The next fight takes place in the middleweight division. We have Kevin Holland taking on Charlie Ontiveros. The opening betting line for this one was Holland minus 800 to Ontiveros plus 550. Right now over on Bet Online, we are seeing the line stay the exact same. Holland still minus 800, Ontiveros plus 550. No action coming in on this fight. I agree with that action. There is no reason to bet this fight. It was put together on about two to three days notice. Antivera is coming in on very short notice for uh, Mahmoud Meridov, who fell out of this fight. Antiveros is just a very low level fighter. He's lost six times and all six of those times were by TKO. So that's definitely not something you wanna see. A regional guy coming in with a lot of knockout losses. He seems to have a karate type of style where he's using that in and out movement with a lot of kicks and punches, similar to Wonder Boy Thompson, but just does not really have any skill in terms of implementing that style. I don't even know if he really comes from a karate background. It seems like he just copied Wonder Boy Thompson's style and said, oh, this can work for me. So I think Antiveros has no chance in this fight. I, I wouldn't even give him a chance at getting a round one knockout. I don't think that any version of Charlie Antiveros beats uh, Kevin Holland here. So I would honestly cap this fight closer to minus 1,900, 95% chance for Kevin Holland. I just think outside of some freak injury or something like that, that there's no way that Holland loses his fight. He is just so much better everywhere. And Antiveros does not deserve to be in the UFC. And Holland likely... Probably takes his time early, but likely gets a knockout in rounds two or three, somewhere along the line. So the pick is going to be Kevin Holland by knockout. The next fight takes place in the featherweight division. We have Andre Feely taking on Bryce Mitchell. The opening betting line for this one was a minus 110 pick em for both fighters. Right now we are seeing over on Bet Online Mitchell minus 132, Feely plus 110. 
More action coming in on Thug Nasty, Bryce Mitchell. He is the popular fighter right now. Seems to be getting a lot of casual attention. And I think he's getting definitely overrated in this betting line. I disagree with the action. I think that at one point, uh, Mitchell was sitting at minus 170. Feely got as high as plus 150, plus 140. That's what I was able to get in on Feely at. I bet Feely for 1.5 units at plus 140 over on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Taking a quick glance at Bryce Mitchell's record, I think you can start to see what I'm talking about when I think that he is getting overvalued here. He was on the ultimate fire and he lost a back and forth grappling fight to Brad Katona. His first two fights in the UFC were both two back and forth competitive grappling fights against Tyler Diamond and against Bobby Moffitt. His takedown defense actually looked pretty poor in those fights. Definitely not a good defensive grappler. He does attack submissions off his back. He has good sweeps. He has great jujitsu and he's not easy to hold down, but his takedown defense is not very good. Then Mitchell came back with two pretty dominant wins over Sales and over Rosa, but those wins both come with an asterisk in my opinion because Sales and Rosa both have pretty poor takedown defense, they don't have good defensive grappling, and they're pretty easy to keep down on the mat once you get them there. I will say that Rosa was very hard to submit, he had good submission defense in that fight, but his takedown defense was really poor, he had no ability to get back up to the feet, and I think that after those two recent dominant wins over Mitchell, people are forgetting how much he struggled in his previous three fights, which in my opinion opinion all three of them were very back and forth competitive grappling fights and all of a sudden now people are thinking that Bryce Mitchell is some incredible A plus grappler and I do not think that's the case I think the grappling is actually very close in this fight I think that Bryce Mitchell does have a slight advantage in terms of jiu-jitsu over Andre Feely but in terms of wrestling I think that Andre Feely is actually the better wrestler of the two when it comes down to predicting who I think is the more reliable takedown artist in this fight I actually think it's Andre Feely I think that the timing and the technique of Andre Philly's takedowns is actually really underrated. I think he's got some of the best timing on shooting shots in all of the UFC, which is crazy to think because he's primarily a striker, doesn't really come from a grappling background, but his timing is great on the takedowns when he's in the middle of a striking combo or if it's a close round, he times the takedowns well, he's a good round winner, and I'm a really big fan of Andre Philly. When it comes down to predicting who the better striker is here, I don't think that anybody would doubt that Andre Feely is the better striker. He has much more experience striking. He's outstruck the better guys, has wins over better competition, and Mitchell's striking technique just looks pretty raw. He has some decent success with offensive striking at times when he's coming forward and throwing volume, but his defense looks pretty bad, and I think that he's going to be in trouble here versus Feely. He's going to be getting outstruck clean, he's going to be getting hurt with strikes, and he's probably going to be forcing some pretty ugly takedown attempts as a result of getting outstruck here. So this fight comes down to Andre Feely's takedown defense in my opinion. How well is he going to be able to stuff the takedowns of Bryce Mitchell? And I think that he's actually going to do a pretty good job of it. He fought Dennis Bermudez, a college wrestler, a few fights back and was able to stuff 10 out of 11 of Bermudez's takedowns. Didn't get taken down until late in round 3 of that fight and didn't really spend much time on his back. One reason why Bryce Mitchell is getting some love in this spot is because Feely did spend some time on his back versus Sadiq Youssef. Youssef was not really known as a grappler, but in my opinion, he showed a great top game, very heavy top control in that fight, and he was able to catch a kick of Feely, turn it into a takedown, and keep Feely on his back for about three and a half minutes. So that's definitely a concern. If Mitchell is able to get Feely flat on his back and is able to get on top here, it is going to be difficult for Feely to escape. Although we have seen him stuck on his back before versus Harkon Diaz, and he was able to time some nice reversals and sweeps to get off of his back. So even if Mitchell gets his top position, even if he gets the best case scenario of takedowns and top position, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that he will continue to outgrapple Feely. I think that Feely will be live to escape that top position, get back to the feet, and get back to outstriking Mitchell where he is the better striker, no question. So I think this fight is actually lined incorrectly. I think the wrong guy is the favorite. I think that Andre Feely deserves to be the favorite. He can win the fight in a lot more ways. And Bryce Mitchell can only win the fight if he gets his takedowns and his offensive grappling going. I do not think that he has any chance to win a striking fight with Andre Feely on the feet. So... Feely should be the favorite here. I'm actually pretty confident in him to win this fight. I think he stuffs takedowns, avoid getting stuck on his back, and outstrikes Mitchell to a decision, possibly even a knockout here, because I think there will be a big skill discrepancy on the feet for Feely as the fight goes on. I got a good price on Feely, 1.5 units at plus 140. Have not added any more yet, but I'm kind of tempted to. I think that any plus money on Feely is a good bet. He should be the favorite here. I think he should be closer to 60% here, so... There's a lot of value on Feely here. I think he could win by decision, but I'm going to go with the pick of a round three TKO for Andre Feely. 
The next fight is the main event of the evening in the middleweight division. We have Anderson the Spider Silva taking on Uriah Hall. The opening betting line for this one was Hall minus 180 to Silva plus 155. Right now over on Bet Online, we are seeing Hall minus 230 to Silva plus 195. More action coming in on the favorite, the younger fighter, Uriah Hall, and I think I understand why people are betting him, but I also don't really understand betting this fight at all. There are so many better fights to, uh, to bet on. This fight doesn't really make any sense. I don't think that anybody has a real clear idea of how this fight is going to go because both these guys are kind of unpredictable at times. Silva is 45 years old. Yes, you heard that correctly. Anderson Silva is 45 years old and is still fighting in the UFC. This fight does not deserve to be a main event. It is rumored that this could be Anderson Silva's last fight in the UFC, so it seems like the UFC is kind of just giving him this fight as a main event out of respect, but it's an extremely confusing fight to analyze. I don't think a single analyst out there is confident in their opinion for this fight. I just don't think there's any way to accurately predict how this one is going to go when both of these guys are just so unpredictable. Start off with just a few notes about Silva. He is 45 years old, as I mentioned. His last fight was against Jared Cannonier last year. He was leg kicked a lot in that fight, and his leg looked to have exploded from leg kicks at one point, and he got finished in round one of that fight. Silva still does a few things well. It still seems like he has good eyes, good reaction time. He sees a lot of the strikes coming at him. He actually fought Israel Asanya just about two years ago. It wasn't exactly a competitive fight, but I still think that Anderson proved a, a decent amount by not getting finished and having a somewhat close fight with a prime fighter like Israel Adesanya. But there are still some pretty big concerns over Silva. His durability is always in question. Of course, he did get finished by leg kicks last fight. That's not a good sign. He hasn't been reacting to head strikes as well in recent years. And of course, his output is just a huge problem as well. How are you going to be betting and relying on a guy who only lands 5, 10 strikes around, who sometimes only throws 15, 20 strikes around? So I think this fight is going to be a low output decision type of fight where both guys, Uriah Hall and Anderson Silva, are only going to be throwing 15, 20, 25 strikes around. They're going to be very low scoring, low intensity rounds. I think that Hall probably has a little bit too much respect for Silva. They likely end up in a staring match type of fight at kicking range where neither guy is really doing that much. You always got to respect the power of Uriah Hall. A lot of his fights, he starts losing early. He's losing two rounds or something like that. And then he comes back with a round three knockout like he did versus Bivon Lewis not that long ago. So you definitely got to respect Hall's power. Hall definitely seems to have the more power of the two. That's a big thing in this fight is I think that Silva, even if he's landing strikes, will he have the power to really discourage Hall from coming forward and have the power to get some respect from Hall? I'm not really sure that he does. I just haven't seen Anderson landing that many hard strikes in the past few years to think that he still has power that's a big problem in this fight I think I'm going to go with an official prediction of Uriah Hall to win a decision, but a lot of that is kind of reliant on speed, power, athleticism. I really don't think that he is going to beat Anderson Silva in terms of skill. I think the physicality will come into play a lot in this fight, and I think that no matter who wins, it's going to be a five-round decision. It's not going to be a very exciting fight. It's going to be a pretty low-output, low-intensity decision where we could even see a split decision for either guy here. So the pick for me is going to be Uriah Hall to win a close decision. In terms of bets for this fight, my best betting advice is probably just to stay away from this one. I think there's so much weirdness about this fight that there's no real value in betting on it. But if you have to force a pre-fight money line bet, I think it is dog or pass. I think there is some slight value on Silva at 2-1. to one. Maybe even uh, goes the distance is a good bet at plus money. But I think it's going to be a sweat. You don't want to be relying on a 45 year old who already has durability issues to make it the full 25 minutes in a fight with a guy who is younger more athletic and more powerful than him so it's sad to see how far anderson silva has fallen he should have retired several years ago he's fighting way past his prime diminishing his legacy fight by fight so it's kind of sad that we have to see him uh, go out there and have competitive fights with guys like Uriah Hall, who he would have smashed in his prime, anywhere near his prime. Uh, but that's the state of the UFC. That's the state of uh, 45-year-olds fighting in the UFC. So uh, the pick, once again, is going to be Hall by a boring decision. So that's going to do it for the podcast for this card. I already have a few bets locked in on my Bet MMA page, and we'll likely lock in a few more plays before the fights start tomorrow afternoon. So make sure you check out my official bets on my Bet MMA Tips page, which you can find in my Twitter profile and in the YouTube description of this video. So thank you all for listening. Hope you all enjoy the fights this weekend, and I will see you all next week. Peace.